Welcome to the first demonstration in the series for the Logical Analytics P6 connector. Today we'll be looking at the functionality available for enterprise and program managers. As a program manager, it's my job to stay on top of a large number of projects and ensure that all of them are steering in the correct direction. It's a reality of the job that I have to rely on the information being passed to me by my project staff. The trouble is, this often means that I'm the last to see the information that I need, I'm buried in paperwork, and sometimes the painful truth is shielded from me. So how can I get the information that I need when I want it, and without the red tape? Let's step into the tool now, and I'll show you how. The first thing you see when you enter the Logical An Analytics dashboard is the role selection screen. Whichever role you choose, the number of views that you see at the top of the screen will change. And it's also possible to automatically filter the role or project details based on a user's login identity. Each month, as a project submits the updates, one of the critical tasks for a program manager is to quickly identify the trouble projects that need the most attention. I can use the Issue Prioritization screen to achieve this. When I first click on the screen, you'll notice that we can't see much information. This is because of the activity filter we've currently got selected. Right now we've selected any submission, and that means we'll need to choose a specific target date for the projects that we're comparing. This option is great when I want to review projects that are submitted on a specific data date, but for the moment I'd be happy with simply seeing the latest submission for each project. As you can see, the projects are being displayed in alphabetical sort order for the moment. However, I want to rank projects based on performance issues. First up, let's see which projects have cost issues. Double clicking on the CPI column will instantly rank from worst to best all of the projects I can currently see. Alternatively, you could also use the EAC Variance Percent column to determine how far over the baseline value I'm predicting my projects will run. For our organization, I'm more concerned about on-time delivery, so let's take a look at schedule slippages using SPI analysis. I can see that the majority of projects fit within the accepted boundaries of performance, and we don't need to concentrate on those at all. However, there are three outside of this band, and these are the ones that we'll need to investigate. So simply clicking on the lift replacement project, we immediately filter all the information on the dashboard to that single project. And then from there we can simply click on the WBS prioritization level to drill down and try to identify the WBS elements where the performance issues have occurred. We'll make sure that the WBS element is being sorted by Schedule Performance Index. And very quickly we can see that there are four elements that are outside of our expected performance levels. The remaining elements, with no performance at the bottom of the graph, are the WBS elements that are not scheduled to start yet, so these are not prioritized. The first two records have an SPI of zero, so as a manager I'd assume that these have not started on plan, and are most likely delayed due to another area. So for the moment my priority will be to focus on the third element, structural upgrade. Now that we've isolated a single WBS item, we can now drill down to the activity prioritization level. At the activity detail level, there are a range of additional analysis options. In fact, I could have started directly at this stage without selecting a project if I was doing a different type of review. For example, this level is perfect for running schedule quality checks, such as identifying all the activities across my programs that have durations greater than 20 days, which I feel will lower the quality of my programs. But back to our schedule analysis. This time, we can see that there are in fact two activities that have SPI performance recorded against them. We can see the first activity in the list has been slipping in the duration trends column and currently has an SPI of 0, so it hasn't started. The second activity has a recorded SPI of 1, suggesting that it has in fact finished, and we can also see that the completion date was brought back from the last submission. So in just a minute, we've filtered to a single project, a single WBS, and identified two activities that need to be investigated, and that's the power of the logical analytics tool. Now I have a very specific hit list of activities that I'm going to challenge my project managers with, putting the power back in my hands to control the program. We can simply export the list of activities directly to Microsoft Excel, allowing you to send queries to your controls team. Alternatively, you could bookmark your current filters and pass the link to another user with access to the Logical Analytics dashboard. I'll remove the WBS filter now so that we can take a look at some of the other ways you can utilize Logical Analytics. That's as simple as clicking on the pop-up menu on the sidebar and clicking the eraser button for the filters elements that I want to remove. As a manager, I'm often involved in monthly updates reviewing project performance. Given the number of projects I'm managing, it can be difficult to keep track of them all. 
So let's look at a way to quickly review which project I'm looking at and track their performance. The next page is the project details page. At the top of the screen we have a few boxes to perform quick project and data date selections. Because we'd already filtered to the lift replacement project, we can already see information relating to this. The right hand side of the screen contains some basic statistics for the project. For example, the project name, the expected project finish date, along with when the project was last updated and when it was last published. This allows us to ensure that we're viewing the latest information for the project and that it's been kept up to date actively. On the bottom of the screen, the first section we can see is for the project Gantt chart. The Gantt chart can easily be filtered to show day-by-day -day activity spreads, right up to yearly spreads for larger projects. It's also possible to view the activity summary through the activity completion chart. This graph shows the baseline plan versus the forecast completion dates. The view gives you a quick way to visually identify if there are slippages within your schedule and to quickly focus in on the specific activities that are affected by the slippage. The view uses no financial or EVM data and is a good example of how the logical analytics tool is flexible no matter how much information is stored in Primavera. If your project managers and schedulers also record notes against each Primavera activity, or at the project level, then it's actually possible to link comments into the dashboard. This means you've got a simple tool to pull together all the narrative information you may require for your status updates, or simply to review whether or not the project has been adequately tracked and managed. So, how can I tell if my key delivery dates and interface milestones are still on track? The key date summary screen is where you can view this information. The screen simply shows a basic traffic light report flagging whether finish dates for the key deliverables are on track compared to the baseline. My greatest frustration as a program manager is not being able to track performance trends between data dates. With our trending graphs, it's simple to see whether a project is improving or getting worse over time, and this is a brilliant tool for program managers during review meetings to challenge their PMs, or to determine if previous mitigation efforts have delivered the desired results. So that ends our whirlwind tour of the enterprise and program manager functionality of logical analytics. But before we leave, I'd like to stress that there is far more to the tool than what you've seen on screen today. In fact, the logical analytics tool has been designed to store all possible information from your planning system, so should you have any additional reporting needs, we'll be able to meet them quickly and easily. If you have any further questions, would like a live demonstration, or would like to discuss pricing, please get in touch with one of the following channels.